This past winter in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, I was born Long Island, but raised in Pennsylvania, and then we had moved back out there. I've also lived in Minnesota, but we're in the Poconos. This past winter, our local theater, the Sherman, we have a nice, uh, I would say, B minus to high C plus theater that seats 1800. Really nice, historical, full fly space. It's very nice. Promoted online a production called Hyperglow. I checked it out and was blown away. Not to confuse this with my awesome concert with 311 in Vegas, which was in a traditional prepared drumline environment. Anyhow, I reached out to Hyperglow, and the rest was history. Hyperglow is the next level for me as the party percussionist, being myself with what I've learned from drum corps and all the other lessons that I've learned in the music business. In the last four shows, I've seen insane production quality with top headliners. In the last four shows, I've performed with Steve Aoki, DJ Blend, Loud Puck, 12 Planet, and Fight Club. I get to see and I'm spoiled with professional live sound reinforcement, concert grade line array sound systems, massive video augmentation, concert grade lighting, festival format planning, theatric level organization and execution. There's so much going on. You know how a normal band you might have five people in it and then a lighting and sound guy? Okay, that traditional format? There's probably pushing 60 people involved with this group. It's a three ring circus. It's overwhelming. The best part with my residency with Hyperglow is I finally get to see other artists with intense fire in their eyes. Some more than I, which scares me because of what drum corps instilled into me, which is to rise to the challenge. I'm building a new confidence level that I haven't felt before. There's a time to be humble, and there's a time to do lion shit. Hyperglow is lion shit. Nearly every show sells out. Our guest lines wrap around the building, and we just announced our first major outdoor festival, which is called Adventure in the Park, which will be October 8th and 9th in Lakewood, New Jersey, at the first Energy Baseball Park on the grounds there. There's more, gonna be more than four stages with all different musical genres. It's gonna be one of the biggest, uh, we'll put it this way, it's gonna compete with Electric Daisy Carnival for those of you that are in with and know about the modern big time A plus Lister festivals. You can't do epic stuff with simple people. Hyperglow is not simple as there is a lot going on. If you think Hyperglow is a normal rave with thump, 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 you're way off base. They constantly musically climax the guests. At moments, Hyperglow creates such emotional, fragile bliss, more elegant than any high-end wedding I've ever done. When it's so dead silent, you can hear a pin drop. That includes dealing with thousands of people. That's how much control Hyperglow has over its cult fan base. At times, it's straight up mosh pit metal energy with actual real mosh pits. I thought mosh pits were dead in the mid 90s. I was so wrong. The only difference now is they bring their pictures and taking selfies while they're doing it. Here, hit me, here, hit me. It's rather funny how society has changed. There are many moments when the fans scream so loud that it's truly hard to lock in with the music. You know how in drum corps, through proper teaching, the sound waves of a segment will line up together and when everything is tight, everyone's got the same sound quality, that touch and feel, and everyone's interpreting everything, how that, that sound will naturally just be louder? When you have thousands of humans screaming at the same time, it cuts through line array sound systems. It's great, it's also distracting because it can drown out everything. The resident DJs with Hyperglow are even signed to some of the world's largest major EDM labels. Hyperglow doesn't do much in the summer because the vast bulk of their residents and subcontractors are all working the major outdoor festivals, which is a wonderful position to be in. I'm taking my time to genuinely get to know everyone and do the right things, one day at a time. This level is completely new to me. 
People told me nine years ago that I would not be able to do this as a core style percussionist in the private event market. The private event market told me I'd never pop up again. I proved them wrong. All I know is that Hyperglow screams box five to me very loudly. I've been on stage and even during my performance, if you watch some of the videos, it's sometimes hard to tell. It's pulling emotions out of me that I've never accessed before. Um, there's been times where during the middle of the set, well, you can see multiple cast members like trying to hide back their tears because it's that level of, I guess we'll call it general effect of production. So like I said, it's not just a thump, thump, thump rave all night long. It's not that. It's a complete production. It's, it's scary how complex it is. For my next performance, I'd like to bring to you something you are not expecting. Atlantic Records, acapella artist. Anybody here ever heard of Straight No Chaser? Okay. Um, Jerome Collins, who's one of the leaders of the group, uh, has been a friend of mine since school. And I actually have... Uh, I'll keep that on the, on the DL for now. Uh, but right now, we're going to do Atlantic Records, acapella artist, Straight No Chasers, cover of Toto's Africa. The lead singer, Jerome, uh, was a friend of mine from childhood, and it's been amazing to watch his success and to travel to his shows and see him pack out these theaters. It's quite inspiring. So Straight No Chaser, Africa, uh, their cover by the song, by the group Toto.
Uh, right now we're going to do Disturbs cover of Simon and Garfunkel's Sounds of Silence. Thank you. 